Hey guys, Wheat Solo here. Um, I recently just ripped doing a GR63. Uh, I'll make a video of it, at least the rip. Um, I was actually very ahead of the timer with only one pylon, and it's because I realized some things about this build um, and what to look for in a rift and what to not care about. Um, so for one, I got skeletons in this. Um, in my 63, I got skeletons as well. And what they tried to do this season was make it so skeleton rifts, which are the which are the best, at least for monks at least, that you, you get less per monster or some crap. And yeah, you can see that, like if you kill the harder monsters, you get more. But it still seems like skeleton rifts are by far the best to get because of how easy they are and things like that. But the other thing I wanted to say is, what really matters isn't even skeletons, it's high density. And it's just high density of any mob. Um, I think in this, I don't even kill that many Ellie packs. And in the 63, which I was, like I said, very ahead of the timer with only one cooldown, um, I don't think I even killed many Ellie packs. I'll have to watch the video again. Um, so like right here, I got this huge pack. I got channeling, which by the way, I don't think channeling is very useful with this build at all. Um, now it depends on what your build is. Um, so I'm running Mythic Rhythm, so I kind of miss out on that. Um, for one, you have Fist of Assimilation, which means you need that third hit, and that's where you're gonna get all your damage from. I think in this group, I get my Fist of Assimilation um, pretty high sometimes. I, th I mean, shit, I've had it go up to 28. So that's 28 times five. That's literally almost 150% damage buff. Um, and that is what I realized is so good about high density rifts, even normal mobs, is you just get a big pa pack of regular mobs and if you have all your defensives up, and my main strat is attack, 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 dash, mantra, seven-sided strike. And that matches up so well with the amount of cooldown, the attack speed um, I have um, to keep all my buffs up, to keep all my defensives up. Um, and it's like right here, I don't feel like I'm, I'm getting much done. But let's see, what is my buff right there? That was times 11. So that's 55% more damage, which is a huge deal. Um, Oh, and the thing about channeling, um, I think Mythic Rhythm is the best. Um, I wanted to try and use the Termination. Uh, I know some people use Momentum. Um, I think Momentum... Okay, this build is pretty mobile. Um, like, this group right here, even this many normal mobs, I could probably proc Momentum and not feel like I was wasting much time. Um, what? I go from... I dash from one side to the other. Uh, it's basically probably almost blocking momentum, and then I get 20% damage. The, so that would be very nice for a channeling shrine, but if you don't have channeling, um, you're still going to attack. You're still going to proc assimilation, which means you're not saving much time. Um, I think if I dash in place mantra and seven-sided, like I, well, I do one extra hit after I hit the third strike. Yeah, that's basically what I do most of the time when I have everything up. Uh, so how much is that saving me? Um, Termination is actually really cool, right? Yeah, because Relentless Assault is stunned. So Termination is just... Uh, but it caps at 20. Uh, but you don't have to do anything for it. You basically always have 20%. Um, it can suck on Rift Guardians. You're going from 40% damage buff or 20% damage buff. And Momentum's really easy on Rift Guardians, actually. Um, you just dash away, dash back. Um, so you have it up most of the time. Um, I think if you actually run it and you do the dash dash strat, which I think is the best, I think you have it up like 75% of the time. I'm not sure about that. Um, but still, in the end, I tried those and I just felt like the way I played and what I was doing with the rhythm was definitely the best. Um, and so what I have on my followers you just saw there is definitely S of Johan. Put an Oculus ring on him. Um, it's, it can be kind of hard to use it, um, but Oh, by the way, I use Thunder Fury. I know some people like using the uh, UJ Gong thing, and I swear by Thunder Fury. Thunder Fury plus Widward is so good. I mean, Thunder Fury slows movement speed and attack speed. Um, so you got Bane of the Trapped, you got Thunder Fury, you have all this lightning damage proccing Widward. You actually see them get stunned quite often. Um, actually, it's kind of funny how much a Rift Guardian will get stunned, and it'll be the whole fight rather than UJ Gong. Um, which is the one that freezes them below a certain health, which is just below that certain health. Um, and so, okay, now you can see this. So when I can get a big group of normal mobs, there wasn't even an Ellie in this room, that's when I get the most done. And so when I was doing my... As I say right here. So when I was doing my 63, um, oh my god, the rift was insane density. And so how I ended up ripping is... Um, I only got one pound on the first floor. I went to the second floor, 
and it was skeletons again, but they had a lot of the wraith things, and I have always known wraiths were dangerous, and I was so surprised how much, they weren't even elites, just an elite pack, super high density, archers, and ghosts, and I was like, oh my, and I just kept going forward, um, so that's what I do on this build, um, even when I'm getting close to ripping or proccing, is I go forward, um, because this build normally can basically never die. I've been surprised how low I can get and not proc with this build. But I kept going forward and just the amount of ranged and ghost and those lightning bolts, bolts did so much I felt like I could never get safe. But if you have a rift like this like in the 63 on the first floor I felt like I couldn't die. In this rift, the 62 the way these skeletons are I felt like I can't die. As long as I'm not done with the fixes and I stand by the correct mobs um, this build, um, because I, I hit dodge cap. By the way, you need to get dodge cap, and to get dodge cap, it's so easy. All you need is blinding flash, dashing strike rune. Oh, I should just post them. Uh, it's the cold dashing strike. It's mantra of agility, and it's uh, guardian's path. Um, and so the passives I run are near this experience, obviously harmony, mythic rhythm, um, beacon of guitar. And then on my Hellfire Ami, I have Guardian's Path. Um, and when you hit Dodge Cap, and you can maintain it the whole time, and please do, or else you're being very stupid, it's just, you're not afraid of normal mobs. All you're afraid of are affixes, and only certain affixes. Um, like Plague is super dangerous, please don't stand in it. Obviously, you don't want to fuck with Molten. Yes, you have 75% dodge chance, but there's a 25% chance you're going to proc. Um, I think... If I get hit by Molten's, even with all my defensives up, I think it's an almost proc on a 62. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, I'm just missing a little bit of life or one defensive's not up. Because um, how this build can be very weird is if you're moving mobs or you're going through a rift, I really recommend doing what I'm doing here, kind of, which is go to a pack, attack it, seven sided strike. Nice. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, I'm so happy here. This is literally when I know I think I'm going to do this in time. Um, so a little bit more talking about the build and stat priority. Um, so cold percent is nice. Um, you definitely at least want it on your wrist. It's nice to get on your ammy. Um, but I'm going Broken Promises, um, which as you can see at my Paragon level it's very nice because I don't have to waste any Paragon points with um, being over 600 Paragon and then what do I do with the crit chance points for my Paragon stat distribution. And I think in the end Broken Promises is not the best build, but I think Broken Promises is so very close, and part of the reason why it's not going to be better is because you're wasting 5% crit, and 5% crit is nothing to laugh about, um, so once you get to 800 Paragon, you're literally losing 5% crit for nothing, and some of the stats that you can replace, um, for one, it can, be, oh it can actually be kind of hard to find gear without crits sometimes, because it's one more stat, you can roll off, you're like, whatever. But if you find good crit and bad something else, it's like, oh god, I have to roll off good crit, and then the item doesn't get any better. And I had that problem a lot, especially with Uliana's gloves, which always come with crit. So it took me a long time to find a good Uliana's, and I'm very sad I ripped, because um, they're very hard to find normal ones, and they were ancient, and they were very nice. Um, I have a shit ton of area damage. I'm not quite sure what I left at. Uh, at one point, I had like 110% on the build, and I think area damage is amazing, especially with the way I play, which is basically focusing on normal mobs. I think right here what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to kill a lot of these normal guys, and I'm not even going to kill this Ellie pack. And I think I'm done for this season. I don't think I'm going to try and do it again. Um, I don't have replacement weapons at all. My Fist of um, Az wasn't even ancient but it was a really good normal one. I don't have a replacement Lion's Claw at all. Uh, I just, I'm kind of annoying. But the more I look at it, the more I realize you could literally do a rift that has high density and skip every single, um, and skip every single Ellie pack. Um, the one time you want to kill Ellie packs, and this is what I was talking about in the beginning, uh, I'm not sure if it's in this clip, is Power Shrines. Power Shrines are insane. So in Softcore, if you get a Power Shrine, you better put, fucking pull the whole Rift floor. Because you actually can. It's not that hard. Uh, every once in a while, certain mobs are harder to deal with. 
Um, but I think I get a power shrine here. And my goal in hardcore was to kill three Ellie packs with it. And there's definitely things I could do better with power shrines. Uh, I think I'm not happy with how I use it here. I think I almost blow this rift. But once you have a good power shrine... <laughs> Oh, did I never get a pylon on the first floor? I might not have, but I was still ahead. Like, you don't need it. Um, but, so, oh, I think I just play safely because I know I'm going to do it anyways. Um, but I, I get close on time and I could have been more aggressive. Is, if you can kill three Ellie packs with a power shrine, it's goddamn amazing. And once you have the power EP up, if it never drops, it's never going to get worse. It's snapshots. So then you can, you can basically get that power EP everywhere on a floor. Um... Yeah. Oh, I just wasn't a good riff for this. Um, but I could have been more aggressive. I think I was being a little passive. I ended up finishing it anyways. But it's so good, and things die so quick. And yeah, this guy is really annoying to kill. What I really should have done when I got this power shrine is skip this mob, pa mob pack and keep going. I think the next area is very good. Or does this floor end? Oh, I'm talking such bullshit. Anyways, we're gonna find out. But that's the thing about power shrines. Uh, conduit is very nice. If it's a high density, um, non-elite rift, it's amazing. Um, Ellie's and conduit shrines, I don't think are with it. I'm not saying don't kill them. Fuck um, But it feels like you're kind of wasting time. Yeah, it was the whole rift. Oh my. I uh, had nothing to do with that power shrine. Um, if you spend time with a conduit on an Ellie pack, you'll kill it, you'll kill it faster, but I feel like the best way to use a conduit with this build, with any build really, is just to go through normal packs. <clears throat> oh, I know, I'm so salty right now, I think I'm gonna fuck it up. Like, this is amazing, look at all these normal mobs. And if you have a conduit shrine, you just go around and kill the normal mobs, um, attack the Ellies a little bit, try and move them with you, um, so I feel like moving Ellie packs can be very dangerous. And what I want to say about the power shrine is I try to get three Ellie packs. Three is my limit. And once you get over three, even three, I proc a lot with three Ellie packs just because it, it gets scary. And it depends on what they have, it depends on what happens. Um, I think what I'm doing here is I'm literally just looking for more normal mobs to kill. And, um,. I really wish I could go higher. I think with Broken Promises, my gear, which actually got pretty good. <laughs> yeah, if the Power Pilot had been here, it would have been an insane time. Um, but I really can't complain. This Rift is super easy. Um, I think with Broken Promises, my gear, my Paragon level... I mean, if I fish, if you fish hardcore and you get a Power Shrine right away, or an EP, sh um, a Conduit Shrine right away, and a High Density Rift, um, I think hardcore people are doing 71s now, or did a guy do a 73? Like, it's, it's literally insane. And it's because this build, and power shrines, and even conduits, you move so quick that you can do way more than your gear allows you, if you just know how to use it. Yeah, I'm very scared I'm gonna fuck this up. But I'm running Bane of the Trapped, and this is literally... It's gotta be the best Rift Guardian for this build, because Saxtris, which is the snake guy, um, he summons adds. But his ads, like, they hurt. They wreck. And he summons a lot. And it's like, yeah, I got a good fist of assimilation, but I was on this build on earlier GR, I think a 60. Um, and his ads, I was like, oh my god, I'm getting close to proccing. Um, and you know the guy who summons the little rat dudes that swarm on the floor? That guy I proccced once. I actually proccced on a rift, and I would have finished it. And I was like, I would rather not die and lose this gear. And if it had been this guy, oh, easy. So this guy, like, he summons adds, he summons a nice amount, you get a good Fist of Assimilation, you get the area damage. Um, I mean, this build doesn't necessarily lose damage single target, you know, but when you have area damage and you have that Fist of Assimilation, um, you really do more damage with a nice amount of adds. Um, and just, like, look at how easy this is. And so what I did there is I... You want to go and you want to get the assimilation buff on the adds, uh, but you want to try it again to direct your attacks on the Rift Guardian because of the very annoying eternal cooldown of Bane of the Stricken and the fact that in an AoE situation, it only procs on the first target. And there it is, Rake 73. Um, my Paragon is fairly low. 
uh, my gear isn't amazing, and um, I was very impressed by this. Uh, thanks for watching. Good luck. Have fun.